And on the previous video, I showed you how I installed my Writing 360 View mirror dash cam. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how to take it to the next level by adding a rear camera. So this essentially will now record 360, but also the rear of the vehicle. And I have previously reviewed the 360 view dash cam on the channel. So if you guys wanna see that review first, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. I'm also gonna put a link down there to the installation video so you can see that one first before checking this one out. And I'll also show you their optional rear camera mounting bracket kit, which gives us more flexibility as far as how the rear camera is mounted from the stock mount. And I'll describe a couple of different scenarios so you can decide if you really need the optional bracket kit or if you're gonna be okay with the original mount. As always, I'd like to remind you that I place links in the description down below to the mirror dash cam as well as to the rear camera upgrade and the optional mounting bracket kit. And with that being said, let's get started. And the rear camera upgrade kit includes the rear camera extension and the rear camera itself, which is waterproof. So this could be mounted outside of the vehicle or inside of the vehicle and I'll show you both installations inside and outside so you can decide which is the one you want to go for and I'll start by opening the fuse box compartment and locating the dash cam cables I previously installed I am looking for a cable label cam next I'll connect the rear camera extension to the cam cable I'll line up the connector keys and join the connectors together now I'll put back this bundle of cables and begin to route the cable for the rear camera extension. I'm going to lift this trim piece a little and insert the cable into it. And then, just using my fingers, I'll begin to feed the cable into the trim of the car so I can close the fuse box. Now I can continue routing the cable up the A pillar. But it is important to point out that at this point, the cable is going to run into areas where there might be an airbag located. And I have made a separate video explaining some of the potential dangers and challenges that an installer faces when routing cable over or under an airbag and how I get around it. If you guys want to see that video, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Since this car does not have airbags in this area, I can just cross the cable into the inside of the car without any issues. Moving to the inside of the car and just using my fingers, I'm feeding the cable into the trim, heading towards the back of the vehicle. Once I reach this area, I have to decide if I go this direction to mount the camera on the outside or this direction if I want to mount the camera on the inside of the car. Let's see the inside mounting first. I like to use this area to hide any excess cable. Now I'm going to insert the cable into the headliner of the car using my hands, carefully heading towards the middle of the window. Next, I'll connect the rear camera to the extension cable by lining up the connector keys and pushing them together. Then I'll hide the rest of the cable, same as before, carefully inserting it into the headliner of the car. Now I can mount the camera on a clean surface. I'll peel back the adhesive tape and now carefully center the camera and stick it into place. Now let's see the outside mounting process. Instead of going up, I'll head down this pillar, heading towards the trunk of the car. Moving to the inside of the trunk, you can see that there is an opening where the cable has come through. I'll carefully pull the rest of the cable so I can continue routing the cable towards the back of the vehicle. Also notice that in some cases, it helps to remove parts of the trunk liner to further conceal the cable.
On this car, I also have to remove this trim piece to gain access to the rear bumper area. And I am looking for a hole to pass the cable through. This car has a perfect hole right here, which is covered by a plastic grommet. This grommet can easily be removed by hand or using a spatula tool. And as you can see, I have made a hole in the center of it for the cable to pass through. Now I can feed the cable into the bumper area and I'm going to reinstall the grommet back into place and continue feeding the rest of the cable through the grommet. And now that we have finally reached the back of the car, I just need the cable to come out from this opening. Now I'm in the floor, pushing the cable up into this area so I can grab it with my other hand. Next, I'll connect the rear camera to the extension cable by lining up the connector keys and pushing them in together. Now I can pull the excess cable back into the car. And finally, making sure that this area is nice and clean, I can mount the camera to it. And here's what the finished installation looks like from the outside. And to enable the rear camera, I'm gonna stop the recording and access the settings with the gear icon. And I'm looking for rear camera, I'm gonna select on, and I'm gonna click this arrow to go back. And now we have the rear camera on the corner. And if I double tap that, it's gonna switch to the rear camera, which is fully adjustable. But now let's talk about the optional bracket kit and the advantages over the original mount that's included in the rear camera. Let's get a closer look at this mount first. And the original bracket is going to work well for most installations. As you saw, the viewing angle is adjustable by moving the camera up or down. And I can also move this all the way to the back if I wanted to mount the camera against a vertical surface. Now, if you want greater range of control, that's where the brackets come in. Let me show you how those work. And I'll start by removing the original mount, which is held by this screw which I can remove with the included Allen wrench. And now I can install the new bracket into the camera just by sliding this guy up and then I'm gonna push back until these holes line up and then I'll secure the new bracket with the included screws. And now we can choose between two mounts, this one or this one. Let's begin with this one. And notice the orientation of the mount. There's a cutout right here that goes towards the front. I'm gonna slide this into position. Now we can secure the bracket on both sides with the included two Phillips screws. And with the new mount installed, you can see that it attaches in the same way with double-sided tape. I can peel and I can stick this to a location. However, now we are able to slide the camera up or down, which can be helpful if perhaps there was an obstacle, say about right here. Now we can slide this thing all the way down, effectively clearing that obstacle. And we still have the ability to adjust the viewing angle to the position that we want and then turn those screws to fully lock that position in place. But also notice that I can move the mount pretty forward towards the front and allows me to mount the camera against a diagonal surface or if I move it all the way to the back, now we can mount the camera against a vertical surface. But now let's take a look at the second mount. First off, you'll notice that we have an opening right there and that opening is for the connector. I'm gonna feed that through here. And now we can slide the camera into the bracket which has two positions available for us to choose from. This one right here, or this one right here. I'm gonna mount mine over here using the two included screws in the same way as I did with the other one. And the second bracket again has double-sided tape so I can peel this and I can stick this on a location of my choice and we have the ability to slide the camera down but also forward 
Again, this can be potentially helpful if we're trying to mount the camera against the surface, but have the camera away from that surface, or if we wanted to really tuck that in. We also have, again, that ability to adjust the viewing angle, and once we find the spot that we like, we can tighten these screws and lock that in place. And this bracket has the ability to allow us to mount the camera against the vertical surface. Now, we previously saw that with this bracket. However, this bracket allows mounting on a vertical surface in the back of the camera away from the lens. This bracket allows us to mount against the vertical surface in front of the lens. Now, what would you want to do that? Perhaps this is being installed on the window of a pickup truck. In the back, those are flat. So now we have the ability to stick this to a window and now we can see out the back and then also adjust the view and then lock that position in place. So hopefully this video helped you decide whether the rear camera is gonna be mounted on the outside of the vehicle or the inside of the vehicle and if you need the optional bracket mounted kit. I'll put links to the rear camera, the optional brackets and this dash cam in the video description in case you need them. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews as well as installation videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.